The Buddha spoke of the Western paradise as distant to those common intelligence. To those of superior intelligence, he spoke of the Western paradise as being on the other side of the ten evils and the eight deviations within their own self nature. Sutra. There are two kinds of pupil, not two kinds of drama. Enlightenment and confusion differ, and seeing can be quick or slow. The deluded person recites the Buddha's name, seeking rebirth there, while the enlightened person purifies his own mind. Therefore, the Buddha said, "As the mind is purified, the Buddha land is purified." Commentary: The two kinds of pupil are not white pupil and yellow pupil, but white pupil and deluded ones. There is only one drama, deluded or wise. You cultivate the same drama. Confused people recite the Buddha's name and expect to be reborn in the Western paradise, while the wise recite the Buddha's name in order to purify their own minds. The pure mind is the Western paradise. If you understand that, then it is not ten billion lands away. It is right here. If you don't understand, you don't know how many Buddha lands beyond even that number. It is. It is said, confused. A thousand books are few. Enlightened. One word is too much. When confused, you must study this sutra. Study that sutra. Investigate back and forth and still not understand. When truly awake, there is no need to study. One word is too much, but you must truly understand. Do not pretend and say, "I don't have to recite the Buddha's name." That is just laziness. Once a man who was well read said to me, "I have read many books, and now I find that they are all wrong, so I no longer read books." He meant that he had realized Buddhahood, and he no longer needed anything. This is extremely stupid behavior. Understand nothing. He faked understanding. You may try to brew tea in cold water, forcing it to steep, but you will never get tea. You can. How can you brew tea in cold water? There are many strange people in the world, an uncountable number. Sutra magistrate. If the person of the East merely purifies his mind. He is without offense, even though one may be of the West. If his mind is impure, he is at fault. The person of the East commits offenses and recites the Buddha's name, seeking rebirth in the West. When the person of the West commits offenses and recites the Buddha's name, in what country does he seek rebirth? Commentary: Whether you are in the East or West. You must not commit offenses. If you do, you won't be reborn in any direction except that of the hell's animals or hungry ghosts. If you recite the Buddha's name and hope to be reborn in the Western paradise, you must also cultivate goodness. If you cultivate dhyana's meditation, you must also cultivate good deeds. Unless you are natural merit and virtue, you cannot become accomplished. In your cultivation, magistrate, if the person of the East merely purifies his mind, he is without offense. The pure mind has no confusion, no selfishness, and no profit seeking. It is without jealousy, obstruction, greed, hatred, and delusion. Purify your mind and get rid of all deviant thought. Then you will be without offense. Even though one may be of the West. If his mind is impure, he is at fault. This is an analogy. The sixth patriarch is not saying that Western people have impure minds, because those of the Western paradise are completely different from people of this world. They do not need to purify their minds, since their minds are pure to begin with. They aren't greedy, hateful, or stupid, and the three evil paths do not exist for them. Do not use this passage to try to prove that the sixth patriarch said people of the West have impure minds. The people of the West have neither purity nor impurity. The person of the East 
commits offenses and recites the Buddha's name to be reborn in the West. When the person of the West commits offenses and recites the Buddha's name, in what country does he seek rebirth? This is another analogy. Those of the West never commit offenses. The Sikh Vajrak wanted to break attachments, and so he asked if people of the East recite in order to be born in the West, then when people of the West recite, where do they seek rebirth? If you wish to be reborn in the West, you must first have no offenses. If you have offenses, you will go nowhere but to hell. If those of the East are reborn in the West, where are those of the West reborn? Is there some other para paradise for them? Don't be so attached. Sutra, common, deluded people do not understand their self-nature and do not know that the pure land is within themselves. Therefore, they make vows to the East and vows for the West. They make vows for the East and vows for the West. To enlightened people, all places are the same. As the Buddha said, in whatever place one dwells, there is constant peace and happiness. Magistrate, if the mind ground is only without unwholesomeness, the West is not far from here. If one harbors unwholesome thoughts, one may recite the Buddha's name, but it will be difficult to attain that rebirth. Good knowing advisors, I now exhort you all to get rid of the ten evils first, and you will have walked 100,000 miles. Next, get rid of the eight deviations, and you will have gone 8,000 miles. If in every thought you see your nature, and always practice impartiality and straightforwardness, you will arrive in a finger snap and see Amitabha. Magistrate, merely practice the ten wholesome acts. Then what need will there be for you to vow to be reborn there? But if you do not read the mind of the ten evils, what Buddha will come to welcome you? Commentary, deluded people do not know how to discipline their self-nature. They do not know that purification of their own mind is a pure land. Sometimes they vow to be reborn in the East, sometimes in the West. Those who are enlightened know that all places are the same. For them, there is no North, East, South, or West. They are comfortable everywhere because they make no discriminations. But if you continue, continually think evil thoughts and do evil things, you will never arrive in the West. Magistrate, merely practice the ten wholesome acts. Then what need will there be for you to vow to be reborn there? There are people who do not dare to practice the ten good deeds. They say, if I do the ten good deeds, demonic obstacles may arise. But they are not afraid of doing evil. They do not fear that demonic obstacles will arise when they do evil because in doing evil they are demons themselves. People can certainly be mixed up. They aren't afraid of doing evil but fear doing good. But if you do not read the mind of the ten evils, what Buddha will come to welcome you? If all your life everything you do is evil and confused, if every paw from head to foot carries the monstrous karma of offensive acts, how can you be born in the West? Which Dharma, which Buddha will come to welcome you? If you do evil, you may seek it, but you will never be born there because you are bound by your offensive acts. Although it is said, you may go to rebirth carrying your offenses, that is just a manner of speaking. You still must purify your mind before you may go. What Buddha is going to welcome a criminal? Sutra, if you become enlightened to the sudden drama of the unproduced, you will see the West in an instant. Unenlightened, you may recite the Buddha's name seeking rebirth, but since the road is so long, how can you traverse it? Wait, now we will move the West here in the space of an instant so that you may see it right before your eyes. Do you wish to see it? The entire assembly bowed and said, 
if we could see what need would there be to vow to be reborn there. Please, High Master, be compassionate and make the West appear so that we might see it. Commentary, the assembly suddenly got greedy. They bowed and said, if we can see it here, then we don't need to vow to be reborn in the West. We all want you to be compassionate and let us see the Western paradise. During the next lecture, the Western paradise will be moved to the Buddhist lecture hall, but you will have to wait until then. Sutra, the master said, Great assembly, the worldly person's own physical body is the city, and the eye, ear, nose, tongue, and body are the gates. Outside, there are five gates, and inside, there is the gate of the mind. The mind is the ground, and one's nature is the king. The king dwells on the mind ground. When the nature is present, the king is present, and when the nature is absent, there is no king. When the nature is present, the body and mind remain, but when the nature is absent, the body and mind are destroyed. The Buddha is made within the self-nature. Do not seek outside the body. Confused, the self-nature is a living being. Enlightened, it is a Buddha. Commentary, the Sikh patriarch said that he would move the Western paradise to the assembly, and I agreed to move it to the Buddhist lecture hall. But if I were to move it, it would be a lot of work and trouble. So now we shall just change our own bodies into the Western paradise instead. Good knowing advisors, the worldly person's own physical body in the city, your very own body is the Western paradise. When your mind is pure, the Buddha land is pure. The pure Buddha land is bliss. In the pure mind, there are no defined dramas, for the dramas are purified when one is no longer turned by their defilement. Outside, there are five gates, and inside, there is the gate of the mind. The mind is called a gate because sometimes it thinks and sometimes it doesn't. The mind is the ground, and the nature is the king. The mind itself is the fine golden sand of the western paradise, and the nature is Amitabha Buddha. The king dwells on the mind ground. Amitabha, your nature, dwells within your own mind. When the nature is present, the king is present. But when the nature is absent, there is no king. If you know that your own nature is constantly present, such, such unmoving, finally, completely, constantly bright, then the king is present. If you understand the mind and see the nature, Amitabha Buddha manifests. The Buddha is made within the self-nature. The Buddha is to be cultivated within your self-nature. Your mind is the Buddha. Your nature is the Buddha. If you work on your self-nature, you can realize Buddhahood, the self-nature, and the Buddha nature are not two but one. Therefore, if you wish to be a Buddha, you must apply effort to realize your self-nature by the purification of your mind and will, your heart and nature. Break your bad habits and character forms. If you do not get rid of the ten evils, the eight deviations, and your own imperfections, you will never become a Buddha. Do not look outside. Confused, the self-nature is a living being. If in confusion you lose your self-nature, or perhaps forget about it, you are just a living being. Enlightened, the self-nature is a Buddha. If you wake up and understand that bad dharmas should never be practiced, and all good dharmas must be practiced, then you cut off bad and practice good, just that is the Buddha. Sutra, kindness and compassion are Avalokitesvara and sympathetic joy and giving a Mahasthama Prata. Purification is Shakyamuni Buddha and equanimity and directness are Amitabha. Others and self are Mount Sumeru and Devon thoughts are ocean water. 
efficient at the wave waves. Cruelty is an evil dragon. Empty falseness is ghosts and spirits. Defilement is fish and turtles. Greed and hatred are hell, and delusion is animals. Commentary: Kindness and compassion are Avalokiteshvara. Do you wish to be like Kwani Bodhisattva? It's easy. Practice the compassionate way. Practice the compassionate dharma and be compassionate toward all living beings. One of my disciples once said to me, "Your compassion is something new. I never understood before what compassion was. Not only that disciple who is American, but many many other Westerners are ignorant about compassion. They are not taught compassion, and they are unfamiliar with it." It is said, even when right in front of you, you do not recognize the Avalokiteshvara, because you do not understand compassion. You do not know Avalokiteshvara. If you wish to know this Bodhisattva and be like him, then practice the compassionate drama. With kindness, make people happy, and with compassion, relieve their sufferings. This is genuine happiness. Not like worldly pleasures such as gambling, horse racing, the movies, or dancing. Worldly pleasures are just a form of suffering. If you can lead others to true understanding and awakening, then you give them true happiness. To put an end to confusion, to cut off ignorance, and manifest the drama nature that is true happiness. Sympathetic joy and giving a mahasthamabrata to delight in giving is just mahasthamabrata. Kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy and giving are the four unlimited thoughts of the Buddhas. If you can give with joy, you are just like mahasthamabrata bodhisattva. Who practices great giving and great sympathetic joy? Purification is shakyamuni, your own purification of the mind and will and heart, your own return to the original source, to your originally wonderful, bright mind, perfectly bright, enlightened, satagata store. All of that is just shakyamuni Buddha. Shakyamuni also means. Able to be human, equanimity and directness are amitabha. If you can be perfectly impartial without the slightest prejudice, compassionate and just towards all, this is just the behavior of amitabha. This is an analogy. Do not say equanimity and directness are amitabha. In listening to sutras and hearing drama. Avoid giving rise to such attachments. To say, I heard the drama master say that equanimity and directness are amitabha. It is to slight amitabha. If you are fair-minded, that is the conduct of amitabha Buddha. But the sixth patriarch said this. You say, can't we believe him? Did he really say that? Why didn't I hear him? Others and self amount sumeru. This phrase is important.